Hey guys, this is Otaku Lori, and we are playing Trick and Treat, a visual horror game. Now, before we start, I would like to say I've never played a horror game before in my life, and I was hoping to never have to. But, now we're playing one, so let's get right to it. Alright. The sound of our steps com combined with that of the occasional nocturnal animal. It's the only thing we can hear. It's terrible dark in this place. The dense vegetation makes it impossible to see the sky or light from the moon. Our flashlights are the only thing that light up our way. At times like this one begs not to not run out of battery. We walk without knowing what we are really looking for, or better said, for no reason. We are just a group of boys bored with our lives trying to create a lasting memory on this night instead of just staying home doing nothing. Today is October 31st, All Hallows' Eve, better known as Halloween. Three young men walk through a dark, but until now, nothing special forest, me being one of them. We are doing it to prove our courage. It's too bad there isn't a girl here to see how brave we are. Seeing it like that, one could say this is a meaningless effort. For a moment, I stopped to look at my rap at my watch. It's 1.49 a.m. That means we have been walking aimlessly for more than two hours now. I'm sure that many people would find a place like this terrifying, but once you get used to it, the fear disappears, making it feel like normal. What makes us afraid of the dark is that we cannot know what hides in it, what lurks in the shadows. But this, cl this is clearly an empty darkness. At that moment, I sigh, feeling how tired my legs are. What is the point of being here? Clearly we had already demonstrated what we wanted. It would be best to return, I should tell them. I was about to speak when suddenly the atmosphere in the forest becomes strange. Suddenly a cold chill runs through my body. It was like any other chill except it was not going away. For no reason the air's temperature dropped from one second to the other. So much so my breath becomes visible turning to mist. It doesn't end there. The air is now filled with rotten smell, just a little short from being unbearable. Images of worms and flies seem to appear in my mind, giving me a really unpleasant feeling. We all stop that moment. What's happening? I ask to- oh wait, no, that's my voice. What's happening? I ask confused while turning to look at my friends. By the expression on their faces, it was easy to know that they were just as lost as I was. It was then that we heard the footsteps nearby that did not come from any of us. We all, we all got dead quiet after that. I don't know if it was out of fear or to check if it was not a mistake, but we stayed motionless like statues without making a noise. Just looking at each other's faces, wondering the same thing. What was happening? As if I could know. We heard the steps again. They clearly belonged to a human, or at least to a large animal, but there was something strange about them. It sounds as if a person walking dragging one foot just thinking about it. It sounds as if the person walked dragging one foot just thinking about it made me shiver. Damn, why is this happening? It makes no sense. We should have returned home before, but now it's too late to regret it. I have the feeling that we were being stalked by someone. The strange footsteps stopped, but I'm still feeling the presence nearby. I don't know where it is, but it, I know that it's looking at me. The cursed thing is looking at me. My heart is beating anxiously. It's almost as if my body was telling me to get out of there. But strangely, my friends seem unable to perceive it. It seems that it's gone. It must have been just an animal, said one of them, convinced that we were safe. I would like to believe that, too. We had a sigh of relief. However, bad luck would soon strike us again. Unexpectedly, the forest becomes darker than before in just a blink of an eye. But that wasn't the fault of the forest, but of our flashlights, which went out. Of the three, only one, mine, was still working. What was going on? Did the batteries die? Asked one of them, scared, while they both beat them desperately as if that was going to revive them. I can't blame them. The idea of walking in the darkness was a lot pleasant for anyone. But after a few moments, we had no choice but to resign ourselves to that. One more, once more, the sound of our footsteps heard. 
but the silence is different now. We are not quiet because we have nothing to say, but, but, but because we were afraid. We continue walking despite the fear that invades us. Visibility is almost zero, but we have no choice. In theory, we were walking back looking for an exit, but I cannot remember anything of this forest. We could be walking in circles. I would never notice until it's too late. I hate the thought of it. I just want to get out of here. Suddenly, my thoughts are silenced. You hear footsteps of someone or something. Once more, the three of us become statues, waiting the presence to go. I hold my breath while feeling my heart beating anxiously. Damn. Get away from here and leave us alone. Unexpectedly, the steps are heard closer. This time, they did not disappear, but rather came at us. I can't stand it. Desperately, I move my flashlight everywhere, looking for the author of those footsteps. Hoping for the light to reveal their identity and erase our fears. Nothing. Nothing. Is that all there is around here? Just empty air? My anxiety grows with each failed attempt. I refuse to believe that it was a ghost. Suddenly, when I move the flashlight again, I see a silhouette. I could not distinguish what it was, but for the moment the light revealed something. Quickly, I point at the same place, only to discover it was gone. I hold my breath anxiously. It was not an illusion. I am sure what I saw. It was then that I hear something nearby. Without even thinking, I aim the light towards that place. What if I found leaves? I, what if I found leaves? Us paralyzed with an expression of di wait. What if I found leaves? Us paralyzed with an expression of disbelief on her face. It is a white cat with eyes of intense red, which stands before us. Her look is not of the friendliest. To say something. Somehow, I got. I get the feeling it's a female cat. Suddenly she she lets out a thunderous meow that leaves us terrified. Yowl would be better. It sounded more like a lion roaring than a simple cat. The echo of her meow is heard throughout the forest, making it sound more sinister than it should be. It was then that suddenly an inexplicable force hits us three. I fall to the ground and little by little my eyelids close, the fatigue becoming unbearable. I lose consciousness on the ground of the forest without knowing what was going on or what was happening to me. Interlude Before Night Falls It's day like any other, so normal that we so normal it was almost painful. The only special thing that could be said about this is it's October 31st. Far were the memories when I was a kid went out with my friends to ask for sweets from house to house. Just remembering it made me sigh. I feel nostalgic. Some things were better when I was a child, or at least it seems like that. There were some who had good costumes, whether of superheroes or monsters. My friends and I, on the other hand, had, had to use our imagination. Creativity was our costume, you could say, no matter how funny it could sound. I remember that my mother once painted red my face and told me, you'll be the devil. But it seems only she saw it that way when we went from home to home and everyone said I was a tomato man. But those things didn't matter to me since I always had a good time. If I asked for candy now, even if I had the best costume, I'm sure no one would give me anything. Except perhaps a scolding for acting like a child when I am 17 years old. But anyway, I can't stay in the past. I must live in the present, no matter how little exciting that might be. Back to reality. We are a group of friends who don't have any plans for today. We are still not old enough to go to disco, and I doubt the guys as us would have any luck in that environment. The other option would be go to a party to meet girl, girls and have fun. Anything perfect. Everything perfect except that nobody has invited us. Not being popular, it has its disadvantages. Hey Axel, let's have a couple matches. What do you say? My friend Steven called to my attention while playing with the game console. Rushered, I believe that's what the game is called. A fast and quite complicated fighting game for me. I would normally agree to play with him, but for some reason I don't feel in the mood today. I have no desire to play now. 
I replied with a discouragement. I almost feel bad for doing it. Boring. The AI is no rival for me, Steven said with confidence. That you're playing on normal difficulty does not help your argument. I don't feel like losing, but if you want, you can challenge to Alfred. I said, lead leading the attention to my other friend. Uh, I don't know how to play that, answered Alfred, doubting for a second. He is sitting behind the PC, but it seems he isn't doing anything interesting. The screen only shows a lot of text. I think it's he's in Wikipedia. What? It closed. What? It's an accident out of the game for some reason. Hey, don't you have something more fun to do? I asked with discouragement without even thinking about what he was reading. Alfred looks at me to surprise, surprise, surprised. The actual problem of society is that people are not interested in discovering their history. He's one of those feet seto intellectuals, always looking for any rare information to appear smarter than others. When we forgot our past mistakes, we are doomed to repeat them, he added later. What are you talking about? This village is small and his story is not interesting at all. Nothing outside of the normal has ever happened in it. Alfred laughs mockingly after hearing that. Your, ignis, your ignorance is worthy of praise. His, his, he pauses, filling his chest with pride. The very fact it is a small town is the reason it's full of mysteries. Did you know that 20 years ago on the state, a man disappeared? So what about it? I asked without being I ask without being impressed or interested in the least. Things like that happen all the time in all places. As I thought, you don't know the history despite, despite living in this very place, Alfred said while adjusting his glasses in an animated gesture. There is a legend behind the disappearance, that is what I was reading. After listening to him, I looked back at the computer screen with curiosity. And then I noticed that it was not Wikipedia, but some other page. Come on, read this and learn a little. Alfred said, inviting us to read what was on the screen. Both Stephen and I moved closer to read it. Town of Abingdon, Oxfordshire, country 1994. I came to this town with only 4,000 inhabitants to support them in an, in an ex investigation. Truth is that never in my life have I seen something this strange. I won't say your typical detective-ish nonsense that I've seen thousands of strange things in my life. I've seen many crimes, yes, some difficult to solve, but all of them are human. Even if you don't know how they manage to perpetuate the crime, you know that they are people like anyone else. In this case, I don't think I'm able to say the same thing. Truth is, I can't understand what happened. I was called for the disappearance of a man named Matthew Graham. 23 years, single, the last time he was seen he was returning home from a Halloween party. He had drank alcohol but was still sober, or at least that's what the witnesses said. Anyway, this is not sim something which can be explained with simple drunkness. He apparently got lost on the way home and decided to enter f the forest called Oakwood. It had rained yesterday so the ground was wet and muddy. He could easily find his tra traces which were leading deep inside the forest. Apparently, he walked for three hours before stopping. I say stop, but the truth is, we don't know what happened then. The track suddenly ended up in a clearing in the forest, and that's all. There was no evidence of struggle, no other trace, or pieces of clothing on the ground. There was no blood, no more footprints, or anything else. The depth of his last footprint and position they were in indicated that he was still walking. At no point, he stood still. It was as if he had vaporized in the air, all his clothes, in the middle of his walk. Obviously, I can't believe such a thing, but I can't give another explanation. The only thing I can remember is that, near the footprints, I sent a, sensed a faint smell of rot. However, there were no animal corpses nearby. It is ridiculous to think that he suddenly started to decay and became earth. In the end, the case was closed in just three days. With no evidence of any kind, we couldn't explain some anything, but that he decided to escape from the village. However, while officially there was no more I could do, I couldn't even sleep in peace. Thinking about what could have happened to him took me took away my sleep. 
In my mind, I thought all sorts of theories, like maybe everything was plain developed by Matthew, but in the end, they all seemed impossible. I decided to investigate more on the issue. I searched the town for similar stories, and to my surprise, I found four more. All young men. The story was always the same. They walked in the forest alone, disappearing without a trace. Even more curious is that all of them disappeared on the same date, October 31st. But there's more. A detail that completely eliminates the possibility that there is a killer or kidnapper behind this. Separation of years. Roger Bacon, disappeared in 1924. Mitchell Smith, disappeared in 1867. Jason Black, disappeared in 1813. And worst of all, Oswald Tyler, disappeared in 1707. It simply couldn't be possible. My curiosity had led me to dig deeper. I thought that the answer may be in the past of the forest. It was then when I discovered that would seem to be simple and boring forest actually hid a great history. The fort was called Oakwood, or the Oaks Forest. The place was called Witchwood. The word witch has huge similarity with witch. Taking into con consideration that it is an old name and language changes over time, that indicates that it was the Forest of Witches. Apparently, more than 400 years ago, the people of the village believed witches lived in the woods. Unfortunately, almost all the information is already lost. They were stories told in the voice without properly written record. I just know that with the change of religion to Christian, people stop seeing the witches with good eyes and begin to hunt them. Apparently, the last one before her death cast a curse on the forest, which even today should continue to exist. Anyway, obviously I cannot accept something like that as an answer. In the end, I have no other choice than accepting that each one of them escaped through the village. From the village. Using the legend of the forest to make it look like it was something supernatural. Interesting story. I didn't know that such a story was hiding in this town. I said honestly surprised. Even if that's a lie, it's managed to, it managed to hold my interest. Wait, there's something more, Alfred said. At the same time, he scrolls to the comments. He re we read what is written there. A couple comments call our attention. Both of them talk about some creature. At the same time, they felt horrible fear for what, they could, ha what could happen to them. Well, the two comments share great similarities, but they could have been written by the same person. There are many others that deny it. Looks like many people went to the forest because of the legend, but couldn't find anything. I thought you could you, that you only read these things to look more cool before the girls. Replied Stephen as a joke. Alfred giggles with little shame. Partly, yes. He admitted that was the secret everybody silently knew. Well, well, now we have activity for tonight. Stephen said at the same time he made makes a face overflowing with enthusiasm. What? I asked completely lost. I thought we were just killing time. Simple. Let's go to that forest, Stephen replied without hesitation. He seemed really fascinated by the story. Are you insane? said Alfred, unable, unable to believe what he just heard. You only needed to look at his face to know he did not like the idea. Despite everything you've heard, you want to go? Of course, it would be a test of courage among us three, replied Stephen, full of confidence, perhaps too much. He should relax a bit. Don't tell me you're afraid. I... No, why should I be afraid? Answered Alfred. At the same time, he folds his arm make, arms, making a false gesture, gesture of success. It's more than obvious that you're afraid, Alfred. Almost as much as you were when you have to talk to a girl. And what about you, Alex? Axel, don't tell me you won't come. Suddenly Stephen asks me, at the same time looking at me mockingly. Don't tell me you want to be the chicken of the group. I hate the tone of voice he used. I will never give you that. I said without thinking, showing a confident smile and look. Well, let's not stay more. Well, let's not stay more. Say more. Take your coats, backpacks, flashlights, and some food. We are going to the forest. Stephen said, full of energy. Yeah! Woo! 
We three said in unison as if we were going to have some kind of private party. Not really knowing what we were doing or where, what we were going to find. 2.15 a.m. Okay, I'm going to save it here and we will have another episode some other time. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed and see you next time!